Hey, what's up everyone? This is James Hart with Burn Halo and you're watching MPJ. So, at the end of this month you have your debut album coming out, uh, self-titled. Um, can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, basically the record, uh, I made the record, uh, started making it in 2007 in May and started writing songs then, wrote from May to October, started the actual production process in October, that went through December and basically finished the record, had it done by January of 08 and the record's been kind of sitting around for a while now, uh, unfortunately I had a little run in with my previous record label Island where my A&R guy, the guy that signed me, got let go right before we went in to mix the record. So they decided they did not want to move forward with me as an artist. And, you know, I was basically trying to find a home for the record over the last few months. And my manager put together a little a little record deal for, for us uh, through himself and the Warner Music Group. So we've had that deal in place since late summer of, of 08. And now it's just it's finally good to... Uh, you know, actually have this thing get out and actually have it be real. I like thank God finally, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I actually did thank God. So, you know, it's just been a while, you know, as uh, taking all the time off that I did from my previous band into this and, you know, not being on the road for so long or making a record and it just, you know, it was just killing me. And for those of you guys don't know, he used to be in 18 Visions. You yeah. that almost a decade, were you? Yeah, correct. I was I was in the band for about 12 years, and about eight or nine of that was done with like serious touring and stuff like that. You know, national and international touring. So it was a big part of my life. So to really, you know, be able to have this thing in place and be able to, you know, release this album and get back out and tour is just it's a great thing for me. Well, and now, of course, you're out tonight with Avenged Sevenfold, Buck Cherry, Papa Roach, that whole thing. Um, how's that tour been going so far? It's been great. You know, the fans have been really receptive. I really think it's, you know, the perfect tour for us in a sense. Um, you know, we've got, you know, we've got some faster, you know, more upbeat rock songs with a little bit of metal, you know, overtones here and there that go along great with the Avenged crowd. And then we've got that cool, like, laid-back you know, sassy vibe to a bunch of songs as well that go along perfect with the Buck Cherry crowd. And then our show is, you know, I think in a sense comparable to Papa Roach because they're really intense and really, you know, fun to watch and energetic. And I think that, you know, that goes along great with us too. So it's really good to be out on the road with these three awesome bands right now and really be able to, you know, grab, you know, the best of like all worlds possible for a fan base. Definitely. It sounds like a good showcase too for the new material that'll be coming out. And of course, you guys have your single out, uh, "Dirty Little Girl," um, and you have the recording of that actually has the guitarist from Avenged Sevenfold on it. Sinister, you know, I go way back with him and, and the band in general from the 18 Visions days, and even you know, even before that in high school, I went to school with a couple of the guys, which is, which is how I met them. So when I was going to make this record, I called, I called Sinister up and asked if he wanted to write a song with me, and you know, he ended up writing a music bed that was really, really stripped down, and it actually, it wasn't Dirty Little Girl, but it became another track that made it on the record in Yeho, which we, you know, we were also showcasing live as well on tour, and when we were, when we were doing the guitars and stuff in L.A., I called him up, see if he had any time off, you know, get him down to the studio so he could play on his track, and, you know, of course he had, you know, a few hours, so he came down to L.A., and got him in the studio, laid down this, laid down his guitars on that track, and then, you know, my producer, Zach, had the idea of, like, hey, we've got this other song, Dirty Little Girl. I think it would be, like, really cool for you. It would be a cool vibe for you as a guitar player. You know, would you be interested in playing, you know, a lead on the bridge and that? And, of course, the friend that he is, you know, he was definitely into it. And, you know, we even got him in on the video. So it's, he's kind of all over the place with us, you know. Right. It's awesome. Very cool. Does he come out on stage with you guys tonight, too? Or? No, no, no. He's not doing that. He's, you know, he's got to do his own thing and get ready and... You know, he's got a, you know, he's one of the headliners on this tour, so I, I wouldn't want to, like, you know, I wouldn't want to get him on stage before it's his time to shine, you know. Right. You should do it, though, the last show, last, last the last night of the tour. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll talk about it, and, you know, maybe at least at some point in the future, if, you know, they got some downtime and we're through L.A. doing a show, maybe you can come out and get up on stage and, you know, definitely be a cool vibe. Definitely, that'd be awesome. Now on your album, you also have... Um, other musicians that are another pretty big band, like the guy from Nickelback and the guy that was in Jane's Addiction. Um, how'd that all come about, too? 
Uh, basically, you know, when I was making the record, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to pursue things as a solo artist or if I was going to market it as a band and put, like, a band together. So when I was making the record, I really didn't have a band in place to really get, you know, players up on the record. So I wanted to get the guys in the studio that were going to be the best for the record, the best for the songs, and really, you know, be time efficient as well. They could get it done quickly. Uh, Nickelback's, you know, one of my favorite bands. I love them. I love what they do. And I love how big the drums are on all their records. And I love how he is as a drummer. You know, so me and Daniel knew, knew a mutual friend in the business. And, you know, they called him up and asked if he'd be interested in playing drums on the record. Sent him a couple songs. And, you know, he had some downtime and, you know, jammed out on the record, which was awesome. And then Chris, who who was in Jane's Addiction and, and Panic Channel and, he did a bunch of a bunch of early touring uh, in his career, I think, with Alanis Morissette. I think he's doing mainly, you know, studio session work now. So he did a record for my manager a few years back. So that was like another easy phone call to make. Very cool. Um, and now you had to go and hire musicians, though, right, to go on the road, or are they part of the band now, or what is the story? With that? Yeah, basically they're part of the band. You know, um, there's there's obviously different sides, you know, of of the business aspect of things that you know, they may not necessarily be involved with, but I definitely want, I want it to have the vibe of a band, you know, where we're out on tour, growing together, growing together on stage, and I definitely would love to cut some tracks with them and, you know, a record with them in the future, you know, I, de I definitely think it would be cool, and, you know, that's one thing that, you know, because I wasn't sure what I was going to do from the outset, you know, whether I was going to be a solo artist or, you know, market it as a band, uh, the one thing I think it lacks at times that, you know, there could be more of is, is um, you know, some real, like, gritty, you know, guitars yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, we've got the great guitar leads and stuff like that, but, you know, the riffs, like the real gritty guitar riffs, I think, you know, could have been cooler on a couple of songs, but, uh, you know, I'm not complaining, you know, I wouldn't change, I really wouldn't change anything about the record, and it's just something that I take in mind and, you know, take to mind and keep in mind for the future. Well, definitely, when you're an artist, you're always looking how you can improve on what you're doing to the next level, so very cool. Absolutely. Um, and have you guys started, like, tossing any ideas, song ideas around or anything with your band? You know, because the guys in the band um, haven't really written and recorded anything in a while, they're really eager and they're throwing around ideas where, to me, I'm, right now they're going in one ear and not the other because I, I would really not... I really hate to take time away from the task at hand right now, which is getting up on stage and being a touring band. You know, we're not anywhere near, like, no, nowhere near making a new record, obviously. This one hasn't even dropped yet at the streets. So, yeah. so to me, it really doesn't make sense to start jamming out new music, you know, and, and really focusing on writing new songs. You know, that time will come, and, you know, that time will present itself, you know, w when the time is right. Definitely. Um, now you guys just switched your drummer to so you have a new drummer from what you originally started with touring. Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, our, our, the original drummer I had in place, uh, his name is Ryan, and, you know, it was just one of those things where, you know, as a band, I think w this is like a very, you know, unique example of, of a band. It's it's not like a bunch of guys growing up together on the road, or growing up together at home. It's, you know, growing together on the road and, you know, feeling each other out, and it was just one of those things that wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite working out. I just, it didn't feel, you know, 100% right. So I had, um, I had my friend Joe Letts. He's in Combi Christ, mm -hmm. and he's been in bands like Amen and The Jenna Tortures. He's a great drummer. I had him come out and play a few shows with us, and then his, he referred his friend Timmy, who is another like seasoned, you know, veteran drummer that's been in Beautiful Creatures and Bang Tango. Mm -hmm. So he was able to really just hop right in and and you know bang out the songs and on top of that he's a great guy too so everything's just everything's working out and the transition was really really smooth and you know everything is is solid between you know the band and, and Ryan and you know we wish him the best of luck with whatever he does in the future. Um, now you guys are out with Avenged Sevenfold now and then you guys will be heading out on the Snowcore tour is that right? Yeah, we're doing Snowcore with Static X and Saliva. And uh, I believe the opening band is The Flood, who I haven't heard much about. But, you know, we're looking forward to it. It'll, again, be a little bit different crowd for us. And, you know, I think a nice mixture and, and, and give us an opportunity to play to different people every night and showcase the songs in the album. Very cool. Now, do you guys have any tour plans after that? Uh, workshop, or? Yeah, we're looking at some stuff going on um, 
in you know mid June and throughout the summer. We just need to kind of wait for a couple of things to pan out, but I, I can guarantee you we'll be out on the road all summer long. Again, we're here with James from Burn Hello. The new album comes out March 31st. Remember, support your artists, buy your albums, and spin edition of Music.